Dino helps us natively process TypeScript and JSX. Now when we're working on a project, we don't need tsnode, tsc, or a tsconfig to write or run TypeScript. You can just create a TypeScript file and it'll work. Let's take a look at how type checking works in Dino. Here we'll type dino check sing.ts. This command is the same as running tsc or tsnode in a node project, but we didn't have to configure anything. I could also go up to remove one of these type definitions here and the squiggly underline will appear. The language server will let me know something is wrong, but running the check will tell me that too. If you wanna run this again in a slightly different way, we saw dino check sing.ts. You can also run dino dash dash check sing.ts. So this will type check the file and then run it. There are a few other handy commands to know about too. Dino check dash dash all is going to check remote modules and NPM packages. If we're using code snippets that are written in JS doc, those can be type checked. Or if you want to run this for a markdown file, you can with dash dash doc only. And so if I were to take my sing function, place that in a markdown file, and we'll say documentation for sing function, then we're gonna add our little code fences here, our three back ticks. We'll say TypeScript, we'll place that in there. And now if I remove the string from before, we run that command that we saw here. So now let's try to run that again. We're gonna run dino check dash dash doc only readme.md. And then that's going to let us know that we can't get away with it even in a markdown file. Try it again, and we're all good. Nice. What happens if you want to customize how TypeScript is handled? Dino allows you to tweak the TypeScript compiler settings using the dino.json configuration file. So for example, the default type checking here is checking TypeScript modules as if they were running on the main thread of Dino. But we can configure this. So let's go ahead and select dino.json. We're going to add compiler options. Compiler options will be set to an object and we'll say lib and then here we'll say dom. So let's say we wanted to type check for browsers or web workers or server side rendering or something else. You can add this here to your dino.json file. So this is going to utilize the DOM, which is the main browser global library that ships with TypeScript. And if you're using anything else, web workers, etc., you can grab a different configuration here. So now that we have that complete, we're going to go here to a new file. We're going to call it app.tsx and we'll create this little app, basically a React component looking thing here. We'll say return an H1 that says hello from JSX. Then I'm going to console log app. Excellent. So now if we try to run this, I'm going to run dino app.tsx. This is going to let me know that React is not defined. So Dino doesn't recognize this global React variable. There's several different ways that we can handle this, but we could say import react from esm.sh slash react. Now, if we try to run this again, it's going to download that from the CDN. It's going to place it into that cache. And now we're seeing that when we call the app function, we get back this little object a representation of this tag that we've created. It's also possible to use this from NPM. So we could just say in the dino.json file, let's scroll down to our imports and place react here, npm colon react. And you could set a version if you wanted to there as well. But what we'll do here is instead of importing from the CDN, we're going to import from react. Remember the import map is going to point to that from the dino.json file. Now we could run dino install, dino app 
node.tsx. It's going to ask for our node environment variables. Good. And now we see all of this is being returned. You'd probably want to actually be rendering this to a string, server side rendering some of this JSX perhaps, but this will get us started with this process. Configuring TypeScript and JSX in Dino is really powerful because Dino supports both. By customizing our dino.json file, we can set all sorts of different compiler options, we can create different TypeScript rules, and we also can manage all of our imports so that we can use things like React, Preact, and other libraries in combination with Dino.